Listen, I hate to be that guy, but I also kind of don't. We were absolutely wrong about a couple of things in Need for Speed Payback. Now I'm gonna see and tell you that we are completely wrong because that's a load of rubbish. This game has problems on problems. It's also not aged very gracefully in the slightest. And every time I come back in the game, I re-remember we had a Need for Speed game without free roam cops. But one thing I've noticed pretty instantaneously is how much action I feel driving in this game. So I kind of wanted to compare the worst of Ghost, some of the worst, to the beginning of Criterion and also the end of Criterion as we kind of knew it when they were making this game. <laughs> Let me get to the point. I kind of wanted to jump straight in and do exactly what I just did in Need for Speed Payback. Put my foot down, get the beans going and ultimately see if it's as exciting to play from the go. That's not the whole point here. I will get into the specifics a little bit later, but one thing I noticed when I jump back to Need for Speed Payback, and I'll explain why I did that. In comparison, when I'm playing this game, especially with the reduced effects and things, and it's ultimately why I think they obviously added the effects, the game's a bit too smooth. <laughs> like, it's a little flat in comparison to the crazy camera we just saw in... And the that's why they had the crash cams back. The contrast was pretty stark. And the excitement of, like, actual, just normal gameplay has been reduced in favor of a overall more sensible handling. And maybe if you compare it to Heat, it'll be a little bit closer. And maybe it wasn't even criterion. But these two games, they have a very big contrast in a couple of areas. Put my foot down. The sounds, the shake, the, the, the FOV changing instantly feels a lot more exciting. And again, I hate to be that guy, but maybe part of that is actually the increase in frame rate. I really want to say that because it's not 100% that. But the solid reason as to why I came back to this game is the drifting. I don't want to sit here and say that this was the best drifting in Need for Speed history because that's up for debate. But they definitely did things a little bit better in this game. When you jump into your catalog of cars, you'll notice all the tabs. You've got race, drift, drag, off-road, runner, speed cross. Maybe they went a little bit mad and had too many. But what I definitely agree with is that the splitting, the defined split of the categories made for a better handling. What they're trying to do now is cater to two different people. The people that want to drift and the people that want to grip in their normal general gameplay. That's not really where you should be. It should be completely split. Race gameplay for racing, drift gameplay for drifting. That's why I initially jumped back into this game, but that's not why I found myself playing for a bit longer than I expected to. Hands up if you remember this event. Hands up if you sweated out this event over and over again. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see you and tell you that I'm a pro drifter in this game. I'm still very, very rusty. And You know when you go back to a game and you're like, I, I probably shouldn't get good at it? <laughs> that's my excuse. Because obviously it's not the new game and who the hell is playing Need for Speed Payback? But the drifting, man, it's just, it's arcade. It is arcade as hell, but it is solid fun. And the, the camera shakes, the motion, the move, the cringy Mac voice lines. Okay, maybe not that bit, but it's just good. I enjoy it. And yes, the hurricane was OP and annoying as hell, but I almost don't care. Especially when I'm just playing these single player damn events online, maybe a little bit of a different story, but because it was a dedicated mode, thought had been put into it, effort had been put into it, that you just don't really get right now. We're taking a handling and forcing it to slide with drift events. It's what it feels like. It felt like they were very last minute. But again, this is not what kept me going because I can just keep playing this. It's the speed cards. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please hear me out. I'm here with good reason. You complete the event and you pick a card. You pick a card and likely it'll be one that's worse than your current one. In every single damn way, trade it in, yeah. Need for Speed Unbound, you jump in, you start an event, don't you dare come after me. What did I, how am I heat level five? I didn't do anything. I genuinely don't know why I got, <laughs> got this after me. You kind of drift around, maybe, Maybe flail a little bit. Complete the drift event to the best of your abilities. I 
honestly didn't I have not done anything I, I, How long do you think I've been playing? <laughs> huh? Get across that finish line. Hell yeah Five grand, baby. Nice, nice. Get away from the stupid police after about five seconds. Go into your garage, go to your performance, go to your parts, buy the parts that you need. Why is everything... I need to upgrade my stuff. Buy the parts that you need very, very easily. Go out and do it again and realize that you've got nothing left to upgrade. You've unlocked everything you could want. Now, I don't want to say this is a bad thing ultimately in the everything is just from go because that's how 2015 was and a lot of people actually asked for this exactly i should realize that reason it wasn't fully upgraded is because the drift events are a certain level whereas i know i'm gonna regret showing it this way if i go to the tune-up shop or actually just keep replaying and replaying and replaying the event i have something to work towards now i don't want to sit here and say that rng and ultimately whatever is the best way <laughs> to keep me playing the damn game but this is something that the crew catches me even still to this day they are three versions in with similar methods in where i want to go in and i want to have the best parts i possibly can clearly on this car for some reason i went acceleration and speed i can't remember why <laughs> but i do know some of my speed cars i did the same i grinded and grinded and grinded to get these parts and it felt rewarding it had something to do in the single player and also to make use of in the multiplayer ah oh, but quit playing in the background this, is, this game is how I discovered Duckworth. He's probably one of my favorite artists now. Absolutely. But if you go to performance here, you can see nitrous, speed, speed, nitrous. And again, you try to get all the outlaw parts to get an even bigger boost. This, yes. My Corvette was my pride and joy project of trying to master out the parts. This one, I focused on getting the Chidori parts. And of course, jump ended up being what I was getting most of the time, which is very helpful in a circuit car and this is how i ended yeah gri drift thanks for that game ended up with building just some of my favorite cars that are, i put so much time into so much love into whereas in comparison in need for speed unbound while i don't want to say i completely hate all the clothes and stuff because i don't actually mind unlocking clothes and whatnot I didn't put anywhere near as much effort into upgrading my cars like i did in this game i made an absolute monster grip build it was kind of stupid to try and and do <laughs> but we were definitely inching closer towards that compared to 2015. i do miss the 60 frames though this is kind of weird to go back and <laughs> play in 30 frames oh god on the brakes brake hard on the steer <laughs> i'm coming back to uh obviously it's much much better into oh <laughs> And the crash physics in this game was so much cooler. The actual, like, animation and the motion blur, it was stunning. Not as in crash cams, just like it just crashing. What if I can get it to happen? Yeah! Yes! Oh, no. Oh. At least the reset was pretty quick. That was quite nice. It only just inches your performance better than the rest. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think it made a difference, especially if your driving was comparable to mine. Okay. Oi! No! No! Almost got beat by the AI with the parts still. <laughs> it made a marginal, marginal difference, but it still pulled me to the game and kept me going, kept me unlocking because I wanted to be better. And I don't even like PDP. <laughs> so I think that says quite a lot. Even though I had everything unlocked, I had as much money as I could possibly need, maybe. I still didn't have the parts I wanted for all my cars and I can trade them in and reshuffle them and swap them in if I wanted to. We also kind of have to talk about the shipments, but uh, listen here. If you had to buy shipments for anything, you're stupid. I, I, I'm not even sorry. Other than the like air suspension, obviously, because you kind of needed it for the air suspension. But like other than that, they were just it was completely pointless. And that, my friends, was the death of Ghost Games, this game because of these that ea told them to put them in it was because of battlefront they needed someone to blame for battlefront they thought ah both games have microtransactions let's blame that yeah i also kind of think splitting up the multiplayer and single player also did damage in this area because then if we pay back if i wanted to unlock stuff and grind for stuff i could do it on either multiplayer or single player and unlock it for both i could take my cars that i grinded offline and grind 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 on my own easy jump into events don't have to wait for other people to jump on like 
straight in when I want on my terms. Whereas in this game, I have to get people to, well, it basically join my game and they might not join my game. And then my single player is 100% useless. Upon completion of the game, there is no reason at all for me to jump into this. The split of multiplayer and single player was better in payback, but I don't want to sit here and give them all the credit because in case you don't remember, there was no free roam for a really long time. Like, don't get me wrong. There are still things I could potentially do in this game. I'm not actually maxed out on my speed patch yet. I don't think. And there's a couple of challenges that I need to do to unlock specific cars that I don't actually need to use because I've got all the best cars already. If you set up events, for example, that require certain types of vehicles, like SUVs or whatever, like they did previously, as much as I hate SUVs, it would be kind of fun to have to use them because they're in the game. Otherwise, what's the damn point? It kind of has this Forza effect to me. I, I don't really jump to the game when I've got a spare moment to actually unlock things and grind things because I don't have anything to unlock that I actually care about. Whereas everyone cares about performance parts. Even if it's like 0.1001%. I'ma jump on and grind for it. I might not care about PvP, but I'm still wanna try and get the best parts I possibly can. Drifting on the crew. Anybody? Where my free burn challenges with my diamond P12 to unlock. You built burnout criterion. Give me a reason to play game. Right now I'm struggling to find one. Of course, hopefully we're going to see some more reasons for it in the future. When I really, which is so crazy to say, of all the recent Need for Speed games that I have things to do in, the first one that comes to mind for me is Need for Speed Payback. I have things to finish in that game. And I, <laughs> it makes no sense because we rated it the worst of the modern Need for Speed games. What? It didn't even have pissing cops in it from the, the beginning. <laughs> I mean, technically it's still like it's just a stupid event cop. I'm stuck now. Stuck on what to do in this game. I love it. Just more flesh. <laughs> That's terrible advice. Really, please, please check out these and let me know your thoughts below because this is important as to, well, the future of the game.